Lydia Raiden. Hi, my name is Lydia Raiden and I'm here with Occupy and we're occupying the courts. We're taking back our courts. And we're here today on Monday, uh, September 28th, 2015. We have all these very nice people. Want to get in the shot? Very nice people. Oh, here's famous civil rights activist right here, are you? Mr. Clark. And this is one of my court watchers, uh, Ann Walensky. Hello. And the reason why we're all here today is because we are making, we are filling out uh, appointment requests, putting them in our envelopes. And we're hand delivering them to the second floor at 40 Foley Square. That's where the grand jury meets. And we're going in to ask to make an appointment to speak with the foreman of the federal grand jury because uh, some of us have had very serious constitutional violations. And for, uh, con for violating our constitutionally protected and guaranteed rights, the U.S. Attorney, Preet Bahara, is supposed to be helping us, the crime victims, and take our cases to the grand jury to have the wrongdoers criminally indicted. So um, the U.S. Attorney um, has been perpetrating a myth for, I don't know, 20, 30 years that the only way to get to the grand jury is through the U.S. Attorney's Office. That's not true. And I prepared a flyer here. There's a, a case from 1985. It's called uh, In Re Grand Jury Application. There was a, a group of crime victims in 1985 who wanted to go to their federal grand jury and the U.S. Attorney's Office was blocking them. So in this case, in 1985, Judge Broderick, who a, was a federal uh, district court judge in the Southern District of New York, made a ruling that said, yes, you can present the facts of criminal wrongdoing to a federal grand jury. And if those facts speak to constitutional violations, um, the U.S. Attorney, that would be Preet Bahara, must, not may, but must prosecute and that's intuitively obvious, right? Because we don't just obey the Constitution sometimes, right? You have to obey it all the time. In fact, if you violate the Constitution, it's a seditious insurrection, it's treason, it's the enemy within, it's the domestic enemy. You're warring against the American people and the Constitution. Doesn't it happen frequently, though? That, that Yes, because we've been dumbed down and we're the sheep people. And so part of what we're doing here is educating about the United States Constitution and not only are we learning, but we're actually exercising our rights today, September 28th, 2015. So you've been here since 9 a.m. and you're sending small groups of people in with these envelopes. And can you just explain again that what what they're going in there? Well, they're going to the second floor, floor of Foley, 40 Foley Square where the grand jury meets, the federal grand jury meets. And they're just putting in a request uh, the, inside there's a request that says, I'd like to, to meet with the foreman of the federal grand jury, and this is my contact information, you know, name, address, phone number. So right today they're just getting the process started where they're making an appointment request. Now why is this so huge? Because nobody knows that you can do this, and when I first did this they tried to arrest me, but for Ann Walensky, who would not leave my side, and said, I don't care what you do to Miss Ray, now I'm not leaving, is that right? So we were, uh, we were intimidated, we were threatened by the U.S. Marshals who tried to instill fear in us. And so we knew we were in the right and we gathered up this group of people and all of us have experienced some amount of wrongdoing. Some of us have experienced um, constitutional violations. In addition, in the case that I was citing from 1985, the U.S. Attorney's Office must prosecute and help you, the crime victim, in cases where your constitutional rights have been violated, that's not permissible, um, that's impermissible, and also if you've experienced racketeering. So racketeering is also defined as collection of an illegal debt. So in my case, as you know, um, my medical school, the Albert Einstein College of Medicine at Yeshiva University, has been collecting an illegal debt, that's racketeering. So for racketeering, the U.S. Attorney, Preet Bahara, must help me, the crime victim, and present the facts to the federal grand jury to indict the wrongdoers. So what happened with the guard, the guard who was going to try to arrest you? Did he was you... in the he was in the wrong, and he's desperately afraid that if I go to the grand jury, I'll indict him. Was he aware of it, or did you have to? Of course, to... they're lying to us. They know they were lying to us, and uh, they tried to intimidate us, right? Ian? Yeah, she. They told me that um, if I associated with Miss Raiden, that I trouble could come to me as well. Oh, they they really? Yeah, they said you better watch out. 
um, the, your association with her because you're na you could be next. Really? Yeah. They tried to ostracize you? Yeah. And they, yeah, they said it right in they said it right in front of you, but you were being detained. It was an older man with white curly hair. So they subjected us to the uh, you know, they were threatening us with the crimes of false arrest and, and false imprisonment. And actually the young lady that we saw at the um, at the um, uh, office that we went to last week with Mr. Podolsky, mm -hmm. Miss Green, mm -hmm. um, that uh, Ju Justin Green, mm -hmm. she was the one I now remember who was outside when I asked how long you would be. She said it's no telling. You should just go back home. She said she may be here all night. She may be arrested. I don't know. So I said, well, I'm staying. So she said, well, you can't wait here. I said, well, I'll be very close, close proximity. And that was who was there that day. So uh, we're trying to act, we're at, trying to exercise our constitutionally protected rights, and in uh, a U.S. Supreme Court case, U.S. versus Williams in 1992. In fact, I have a case. Hold on, please. Let's look this up for themselves. Hold on, let me let me get the case. Ah, here we go. This is the Supreme Court case, U.S. versus Williams. Here you go. And in this case. Judge Antoine, uh, Anton Scalia, U U.S. Supreme Court Justice Anton Scalia, is opining on the nature of the grand jury. And he's saying that the grand jury is, um, it's, it's like the independent fourth branch of government. I highlighted some of the, um, the, the, the parts where he, uh, uh, Supreme Court Judge Scalia is opining about the nature of the grand jury. And he's talking about how the grand jury is like the independent fourth branch of government. And, you, you know, we have the executive branch, the legislative branch, the judicial branch, and we have the grand jury. The grand jury is supposed to be our safety control device so that if you have in the executive branch of government, if you have the Department of Justice, let's say you have an FBI agent, not unheard of, that an FBI agent would break the law. Um, you can't. You cannot be blocked by the executive branch of government from going to your grand jury because that's the safety control device for the people to go to their federal grand jury and indict the wrongdoer, which might be your own government official. So you know this is part of how our government was formed that we were able to protect ourselves against public officials who are engaged in wrongdoing. So we have the right to reach out to the form in our, our federal grand jury, and that's what we're doing today. I had wanted to say something that when we had gone. Um, subsequently with groups of people in there that um, Marsh, U.S. Marshals came down and inappropriately questioned us in demeaning ways um, uh, about certain affairs that we had or like um, speaking in a derogatory way to certain people, myself included, and asking unusual questions that were totally inappropriate and not proper. So, so basically we've Basically, we've been, you know, dumbed down. We're not taught about our Constitution. We're supposed to be. And when we discover this information and try to exercise it, what happens is uh, the U.S. Marshals are sicked on us, Homeland Security is sicked on us, and they try to instill fear and make us go away because that maintains the status quo. And we're not maintaining the status quo. We're exercising our constitutionally protected and constitutionally guaranteed rights. So if you're a crime victim, and if those crimes speak towards uh, violating your constitutionally protected and constitutionally guaranteed rights, you have every right to go to the federal grand jury and for constitutional violations, the U.S. prosecutor must, not may, but must prosecute the wrongdoers. If you are being victimized by racketeering, the U.S. attorney, you have every right to go to your federal grand jury and again, uh, the U.S. prosecutor must prosecute for racketeering which when you think about it, collection of an illegal debt is racketeering, and Mr. Clark has uh, 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 people that he's trying to help in his communities um, who are being um, foreclosed on by you know, dishonest banks who are collecting an illegal debt. So obviously they don't want us pulling on this thread because it's a, it's a game changer, it's a real game changer. I mean, if you think about it, and we were discussing this with uh, all, all the uh, participants here today, Let's say a police officer stopped you and you know, searched your car without uh, probable cause, without a good reason, and without a warrant. That police officer would, would, would have violated your Fourth Amendment constitutionally protected right to be free from um, you know, illegal searches, searches and seizures. So, well, can you imagine if a, a police officer pulled you over and violated your Fourth Amendment constitutionally protected right, and you said to that police officer, I want your name, I want your badge number, and tomorrow I'm going to the foreman of the federal grand jury and criminally indicting you for what you've done here today. 
I guarantee you that everybody would start obeying the law immediately. So that that would that's a, this is a game changer. This changes the rules, and now we'll see how quickly our government is going to start obeying the rules and obeying the law and behaving morally, ethically, and um, and constitutionally. So Thank that's, you. That's what we're here to do. Lydia Raiden. Thank you. Myself and a young lady beside me um, walked into the grand jury, rang the bell, there was a slight hesitation, and a gentleman with an aqua shirt that seemed very perturbed and slammed the door, um, took my envelope um, when I said it was for the grand jury, and then slammed the door. And you're, all you were trying to do was make an appointment to speak with the foreman of the grand jury, right? You right. Were not, you were not storming no, the No, I was or... very demure and very um, non-hostile, and, you know, I met with a hostile annoyed response so for no reason. If you get an appointment with the grand jury, then what? Well, well, what you're doing is you're making an appointment to sit down with the foreman of the grand jury because the federal grand jury is charged with, it's their job to investigate wrongdoing, criminal conduct in their district. So these are, the envelopes are all full of wrongdoing? Well, no, they're, all they are is a request to have a face-to-face a, a -face sit down meeting with the foreman of the grand jury. That's how you start a criminal prosecution. So um, we've been dumbed down into believing that the only way we can get to the foreman of the federal grand jury or get to the grand jury is through the U.S. prosecutor on the federal level and on the state level through the district attorney. Um, so the district attorney would control the grand jury at a state level and the U.S. attorney uh, would control the grand jury on a federal level. That's not how our government was set up because if you think about it for a little bit, Right? We did not make the federal prosecutor, the U.S. attorney, the king or the queen, or the district attorney, the king or the queen, to decide who suffers and who gets remedy. That's not how our, our, our system of government was set up. So they've dumbed us down. We don't understand. We're not taught our constitutional rights, so it's easy to take advantage of us. So what we're demonstrating today is that you go to, if you're at 40 Foley Square, which is the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, on the second floor you'll see a little sign that says Grand Jury. And right here, knocked, she was standing in the hall. She knocked on the door, right? And, and she gave her little uh, request that, that was in an envelope that said, I'd like to speak with the foreman of the federal grand jury. That's how she would get the process started so that the grand jury would start an inquiry into the wrongdoing in her case. And if indeed they find constitutional violations or racketeering, the U.S. attorney would have to help in and prosecute the wrongdoers. And so when she knocked on the door and just said, you know, here's my name, address, and phone number, I'd like to make an appointment, they acted really nasty. And so our response is, well, if you don't want to do your job, we'll find somebody the else. The word is surly. Surly. The word is surly. So as Mr. Clark was pointing out, well, if you don't want to do your job, you know, we have uh, lots of unemployment in America. We'll find someone who would be grateful for your job. So we'll, we don't have a problem. So, yeah, and in fact, he didn't even really listen to my words. It's like, you know, he just took, you know, he, he didn't even ask me, said thank you, didn't give me his name. He just, like, came out like an automaton, was nasty, and just pulled it and went how, back and slammed it. How many people do you think he ring, rings their bell up there? No, Dude, not, not enough. Not, not enough. enough. <laughs> not, yeah. Many more need to. Yeah, it's like that's the fun. That's what they're paid for. They're not sitting there to lounge around. They're sitting there to take effective action for people who have problems and want to see their grand jury. Actually, that's that's very good because that's a very good, uh, uh, very insightful. They're not state. sitting there to lounge or hang out or or stare at their phone. They're there for a function that they don't that they don't really fulfill because nobody usually gets to get there. Right, unless they're, they're controlled by the U.S. Attorney's Office. But when, when there are constitutional violations, that represents a clear and present danger to the United States Constitution and the American people, which thereby engenders a clear and present duty for the U.S. Attorney to prosecute the wrongdoers. So if you were to look at a uh, U.S. Supreme Court case, Cole, uh, hospital, attendant, hospital Superintendent et al. versus Richardson informs us that when the Constitution is violated, those wrongdoers are engaged in a seditious insurrection. They're, in fact, engaged in treason. And that's uh, warring against the American people. It's the domestic enemy. So if I think you don't, it's raining, if, so if we're going to have to go. If you don't get a response to these requests... They'll lose their jobs and we'll prosecute them. 
This okay. is this is not optional. Okay. Judge Broderick already ruled in the Southern District of New York. There's no discretion when the Constitution is violated. So you have a judge on your side. We, judge Broderick already ruled in 1985. Okay. Um, in, um, in in a case called Inri Grand Jury Application where a bunch of um, uh, crime victims wanted to go to their federal grand jury and they were blocked by the U.S. prosecutor. And so if you look up this court case uh, in re-grand jury application, Judge Broderick in the Southern District of New York has already ruled that um, uh, you, you, can, uh, you and your attorney can present facts to the grand jury and if those facts speak to constitutional violations, the U.S. attorney must not may, but must prosecute, and for rac racketeering, the U.S. Attorney must prosecute. I, I've personally found it disturbing and shocking the behavior that people in judicial systems have of treating the general public that's peaceable and just inquiring. If you would have told me this is true, I never could believe the level of like corruption and the level of insurrection that goes on towards people that are genuinely honest, decent people that are just seeking a remedy to their, to their problem. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. You're quite welcome.